Well, hello and welcome along to another Al's Geek Lab. And today I'm going to be showing you Windows version 2 from Microsoft. Windows 2 was released by Microsoft in December of 1987. That's 32 years ago. But yet it was still supported by Microsoft right up until the end of 2001. That's a pretty good support life cycle. Windows 1.0 had come out in 1985 and this was the follow-up, hotly anticipated because version 1 of Windows was absolute crud. And uh, people were thinking that this was going to be a bit different. Unfortunately, it wasn't really that different. It introduced a few extras like minimize and maximize. That's terminology that we've kept in Windows even to this day. Now don't get too excited here, but ladies and gentlemen, also one of the new features that came with Windows 2.0 was the support for the wonderful brand new VGA standard video graphics array which gave you 16 blazing colours. I will demonstrate to you later on the applications which were built in to Windows 2.0, but suffice it to say they were fairly spartan. First of all, you got a calculator, a calendar, the card file, which is very 80s-esque, the clipboard, which was literally an application that allowed you to view what the contents of the clipboard was. Yeah, the copy and paste clipboard. Uh, the clock, yep, a control panel, CVT paint, which allowed you to convert paint files from Windows 1 format to Windows 2 format, the MS-DOS EXE file, which was the MS-DOS executive or the file manager, Notepad, then everybody's favourite, Paint. PIF Edit was a program for information file editor. I'll show you that in a bit as well. Reverse, which is the game of Reverse. Spooler, which is the print spooler. The terminal, which would allow you to connect to other PCs and BBSs. As well as Write, which was the simple word processor, which you probably know today as WordPad. And that was it. Those were the applications which came with Windows 2. Annoyingly for Windows 1 owners, a lot of the applications that were written for Windows 1 didn't always work with Windows 2. So a lot of new applications came out. The first ones were Microsoft Word and Excel. Those were never released before for Windows. As time went on, of course, there were productivity applications which started making the difference for Windows owners. For example, Aldous PageMaker, Corel Draw, PC Paintbrush, Micro Graphics Designer and Draw Plus, PubTech Desktop, which uh, made the desktop look like a Mac desktop, the ABC Flowcharter, AMI Pro word processor, Microsoft Project, yes, that's where it began. Xerox Presents, which was similar to PowerPoint. Wine Mine, Omnis 5 Database, Arts and Letters, Microsoft Mail for Networks, which became Outlook, I think. Fax It, Math Type, WinGraph, Publishers Type Foundry, and WinSong Composer, to name but a few. In terms of games, it was pretty Spartan, but they did have Balance of Power and Taipei. Another big difference with Windows 2 versus Windows 1 is that they allowed applications to overlap with each other. In Windows 1 you could either tile the applications side by side, which could get messy pretty quickly, or you could iconize them. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get stuck in and have a look and see what Windows 2 is all about. First things first, installation is pretty straightforward. You can install from floppy disks or you can install from, from a zip file, which is pretty much what I've done here. You just select the monitor type, select the uh, language and then the keyboard layout and then the mouse as well, and then you're pretty much off. Now, one thing I did find a bit disappointing was the fact that you couldn't uh, choose New Zealand in the list of locales. And in fact, there's quite a lot of locales that you can't choose from. So after that seemingly simple installation, I thought I was home and hosed. But then when I ran Windows, I got all this nonsense garbled text on the screen and I wondered what the hell was going on. And then I had a look and it turned out that 
Windows 2 only supports MS-DOS versions 1 through 4. I've got version 6.22 here, so of course it didn't work. In the end, what I had to do was do some trickery, and that's by using a device driver called setver.exe. That's it here in the config sys. So this is version 2.03, which is a later revision in 1988. This garish color that you have here is the default color of the EGA version. So you can configure it for Hercules Monochrome or CGA or EGA. So I have it here in glorious 16 color EGA. Uh, you can see the resolution though is um, quite low. I've chosen to put it on my 5153 monitor here. So what are we seeing first of all? Where is the start menu? Where is the um, program manager? Where's anything really. Uh, what you've got there is a file manager of sorts called the MS-DOS Executive and you can see that it's popped us in the Win2 folder. We have available drive A and obviously the hard drive C and then a bunch of files and well that's really all about it. Uh, so there's a bunch of tools that comes with it. Uh, so for example if we go into here there's a game, Reversi. Isn't that cute? So you can do stuff like this. Cool. All right. Um, you'll notice that the menus, the drop-down menus, all look very text-based as well. They don't look really that uh, that graphical-driven. Um, they are kind of cutesy. I do like the icons, though. But yeah, if you have a look at the video I did recently uh, on DOS Shell, you'll also see some striking similarities. So if I minimize that. You can see down here that it's, it's still running. I can bring it back up again. So that's uh, almost multitasking there, would we say? Incredible. Now, if uh, let's, let's keep that one running. And finally, we find our friend Paint. Yes, it's almost the same application that we've lovingly known for, well, the best part of probably 30 years now. Of course, the palette is all in black and white, so not great. So there you go, there's, um, there's paint, and you can see the option there to restore, which goes down to that smaller size. I can minimize, and now I'm running two apps. So this was a big deal back in 1985 to 88, multitasking or effectively these applications are running side by side. Here's a nice little clock as well, how cute. And I believe that's the, the right time. And so you can see the minute hand and the, the hour hand, and they're sitting down. So that's the sort of applications that come with Windows. Um, a lot of the things that uh, you'll find uh, in Microsoft Windows to date, such as Alt F4, for example, Alt F4 in Windows, of course, closes an application. Well, that shortcut still exists to this uh, to this day. So, running these two applications, let's go into my hard drive into just the the main directory. I can see all the applications in there, and let's just see if I can run a normal non-Windows based. MS-DOS application. It's thinking about it. Still thinking about it. Hey, there we go. Let's have another look at something else. I'll go for a PFS first choice because I like that. It's a nice um, editor. Nice word processor. Now launch this here. There's a very familiar feeling to people who had Microsoft Windows in its infancy on a PC which was um, around the typical configuration at the time, a PC with around 640 kilobytes of RAM. You'd see this sort of message all the time. So you can see that the, the fact is that most people had MS-DOS applications running on their computer at the time and wanted an easy way to manage their applications. Let's see if I can run another application up. I'm going to go into Norton Utilities and I'm going to see if I can get some sysinfo. This is really annoying as well. Applications need a PIF file for um, 
information about them and also around configuration. So every time you start up an application that doesn't have a PIF file, it gives you this warning. And there's no way to dismiss it other than pressing OK. OK, so here's a typical DOS application running away. And if I press Alt and Tab now, you might have noticed there was very quickly there was a brown line at the top of the screen that flashed up. That was it trying to say that I'm going back into Microsoft Windows. However, what's happened as per usual with Windows, it's completely locked up the machine. So now I'm back in business. Let's grab the keyboard and mouse and let's have a look. So that PIF edit thing I was talking about, the PIF file, you can go in here and you can create a PIF file and it tells it how to switch between applications and how to deal with the, the, the application. So for example, if we say that um, we wanted to use QBasic, you have to remember all of this. How many kilobytes of memory, I have absolutely no idea. Let's take, take a shot in, in the dark and say 128. I have, I've got absolutely no idea. Um, directly modifies the screen, probably. Directly modifies the keyboard, memory, probably. <laughs> um, we switch between the program, do you switching in and out of text mode, probably. Close the window and exit. Yeah, maybe. So I'll save this as QB45 PIF. Interestingly, in Windows 2, there is no right click. You, there's just literally nothing you can do with a right click. So you might, only, might as well only have a one button mouse. OK, so let's just go in to find another utility. Um, Speedcom EXE, an application that works at the raw level of the machine. Again, this warning about PIF files. All right. All right, so the application's working away. I'll switch that annoying beep off. And you can see it's, it's, it's pretty much right. I start moving the mouse and the machine starts slowing down quite, quite a lot, which is quite interesting. And if I press Alt and Tab here, you can see that brown line across the top. And you can see if I hold down the Tab button, it gives me either MS-DOS Executive or Speedcom. So it's basically saying here, OK, I'll allow you to swap between applications. So I'll go back to the MS-DOS Executive, and I can see, you can see that I've got SPE down there, which is Speedcom. All right, let's just go back to the Windows directory and see if we can... Uh, See if we can launch a few applications at the same time. Let's have a calendar. Many years later. Now, you can see that this isn't exactly very fast. It's still flickering away. It's running an application in the background and it's, it's pretty much, I'm pretty sure it's paging out to the disk. If you could see the disk light uh, flashing away right now, it's, it's flashing away in anger. Every time I press the keyboard, the machine's sluggishly hauling. pretty painful. So if I alt tab, hopefully I can go back to my speed test application. And here we go, it's still running in the background. I'm going to kill that application and you get this screen here inactive and you can close it. This, this thing here allows you to mark as well, which is basically like copy and paste so you can copy the bit of text that may be on the screen of course there is nothing on the screen and now I'm finding it very difficult to get back into Windows there we go close
Okay, so finally I'm back in. It's take, it takes every time I have to go and do something, it has to redraw the whole display. But I'm just going to put in another item here. Very painful. So I think I've had enough. <laughs> now bear in mind that this PC here is a 286 class processor. It's not even the most basic 8088 or 8086. This is a slightly faster machine with a bit more RAM in it than the usual 640K. Let's have a look at the control panel and you can see things like the real basic things that you can do. You can change the clock, the date, how fast the cursor blinks, uh, how, how quickly to double click. This is, this is heavy stuff here. You can add a printer, you can add new fonts. It's really basic. Screen colors, let's have a look at this. Whoa, man. Now I have seen somebody actually take these colors and, and migrate the, the wallpaper, or I guess the, the background color, from an installation of Windows 1 all the way through to Windows 10. So they just did an upgrade of Windows from Windows 1 through to 10. That is an awful, awful color. One thing I did find um, interesting is the lack of countries that you can uh, choose from. But you can, you can uh, choose a customized country. Good old notepad. The notepad that we probably all still love. Right is the word processor which came with Windows. You may be familiar with WordPad and later versions of Windows. This is probably where WordPad came from. Um, if you look at this, this is Microsoft's attempt at a word processor in Windows 2. Okay, and we can just change the change the font, maybe I think character. There we go. All the fonts that come with Windows 2 are all nasty. You get three fonts, and none of them are very particularly pleasing on the eye. I wouldn't want to use this. There were much nicer word processors out there at the time. And if you think about how advanced this is, or how in comparison to, say, the Macintosh at the time, the Mac was kicking this ass. One of the cooler things that Windows 2 could do, which wasn't quite there in Windows 1, was the ability to copy and paste from separate applications into other applications. As you can see here, here's an example from Lotus123, which is a DOS mode application. I've marked the text, then copy the text, and then I can paste it into a, a Windows application such as Notepad or WordPad here. So let's just wrap it up then. Let's have a wee summary. Couple of good points first then. Um, it allowed overlapping windows, which Windows 1.0 did not. Uh, it had a long support life cycle, yep, many years there, and uh, well, that's about it. So let's talk about the bad points of Windows 2. First of all, let's start off with the lack of locale support for many countries, including my own place of residence, New Zealand. Secondly, if you used the popular applications of the time, most of them were still MS-DOS based. If you just made them Windows based, then you were going to cut out a whole bunch of the user base, most of the user base. So this meant in lots of cases that you had to shut down Windows to regain sufficient memory to run your application, which really defeated the purpose of running a single point and click interface. On that note as well brings me to my third point. There wasn't an abundance of software titles. In fact, there were hardly any when the product came out. The fourth point on this stinking turd of a piece of software is it's crashy as all hell. It ran in real mode, not protected memory, so it crashed 
all the frickin' time. Number five, it's slow. You've seen the uh, the real world examples here on my PC. It's a PC286, uh, so it's got a 286 processor rather than a, um, an XT processor, and it's still really slow. The PCs that were out during that time were usually the PC and the PCXT, so they ran at 4.77 megahertz. This is a very slow platform. It doesn't support DOS 5 as well, is my next point. Uh, you have to use um, DOS 4 or less. Um, you, if you want to use DOS 6 or DOS 5, you need to do a little bit of trickery, which is by using the setver uh, setting in your config sys. Uh, next point is that it handles memory really badly and it didn't solve the one megabyte memory barrier. And finally, there were arguably better equivalents out there, Gem and Deskview, to name but a few. And don't uh, forget that also Microsoft had their own DOS shell application, which is uh, reviewed in another video of mine. Check that one out as well. So there you have it. That is Microsoft Windows 2. Uh, so let's just give this an overall rating. On the stinkometer, this is about as stinky as it ever gets. Windows 3.0 came along later on, it was far, far superior and it looked like Windows 3.1 which came after that obviously. 3.1 set a standard and then it was 95 and it was completely different again. From 95 onwards, Microsoft pretty much dominated the graphical user interface environment. So there we go, that's my review of Windows 2.0. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments, please send them to me. I love to hear from you. Also, please press that subscribe button, get the notifications. I really, really do appreciate all of you subscribers out there. Uh, it's amazing how fast this channel is taking off and I really hope to have more content up for you soon. If you do have an idea for a new video, I would love to hear from you. So pop a wee comment in for me and tell me what you'd like to see. Until then, I'm going to leave you with this. This monstrosity is Steve Ballmer of Microsoft introducing Microsoft Windows. Uh, this advert it speaks for itself. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Catch you soon. How much do you think this advanced operating environment is worth? Wait just one minute before you answer. Watch as Windows integrates Lotus 123 with Miami Vice. Now we can take this Ferrari and paste it right into Windows Write. Now how much do you think Microsoft Windows is worth? Don't answer. Wait until you see Windows Write and Windows Paint and to listen to what else you get at no extra charge. The MS-DOS executive, an appointment calendar, a card file, a notepad, a clock, a control panel, a terminal, a print spool, a RAM driver, and can you believe it? Reversi, that's right. All these features in Reversi, all for just how much did you guess? 500? A thousand? Even more? No, it's just $99. That's right. It's $99. It's an incredible value, but it's true. It's Windows from Microsoft. Order today. P.O. Box 286. DOS. Except in Nebraska.